We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the session named YCIG, Youth in the Decision-Making Process. Here's, my name is Pedro Lana. I am the on-site moderator for the Youth SIG. And today we are listening to three speakers. First, we will have Aileen Sejas, who is a criminal lawyer from the University of Buenos Aires, Argentina. She is currently a regional engagement director from Latin America and the Caribbean of the Youth SIG and the steering committee member of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. She has been involved in different activities of internet governance such as Youth for Digital Sustainability Program at the Working Group Internet for Social Cohesion and being part of the coordination of the inclusive internet governance ecosystem and digital cooperation for the Project Youth, uh, for the Project Youth Summit. Then we will have Aiden Federlin, is the correct pronunciation, uh, who is a public interest technologist, researcher, and writer. He previously represented the European civil society organizations on the Council of the Generic Names Supporting Organization, the body which sets policy for generic top-level domains, such as .com and .org, and he was a, a 2018 to 2019 Technology Policy Fellow with the within the Mozilla Foundation. Uh, then at last, we, but not least, we will have Emilia Zaleska, who is a lawyer actively involved in internet governance initiatives since 2017, when she participated in a project called Copy Fighters. She's a, uh, the co-founder and a steering committee member of the Youth IGF Poland, actively involved in organizing this year's youth summits in Katowice. She is also European Youth Envoy in Generation Connect by the International Telecommunications Union. And I am also introducing Mohamed Atifalin, who will be the moderator of the Zoom Room, uh, or online moderator, moderator. And he is a chemical engineering graduate from uh, Aligarh Muslim, Muslim University in India, and has been associated with the Internet Society Delhi chapter in India. Please keep in mind after the speaker's presentation, we will brainstorm together, have an open mic, and take a picture together. Well, so uh, now let's jump to the first segment of our session. I'll make two questions. So please, speakers, stick to two minutes interventions. And I'm giving the floor to Aiden first, then Emilia, and in third place, Aileen. So, Aiden. Could you begin by telling us a bit about how you became involved in the internet governance ecosystem and any lessons you have learned about this experience? Sure, I'd be happy to. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Hi everyone, my name is Aidan Badulin. I am a public interest technologist in Berlin and Germany. And it's funny because I've had this conversation with a lot of people like ourselves over the past eight weeks for a different research project that I've been working on. So I've been interviewing a lot of people that, like myself, have tried to enter into leadership positions in different multilateral or multi-stakeholder forums. So I can share some of the lessons that I've heard from a community of voices. So these are not all of my own original thoughts, although certainly some of them have been my own experience. And essentially what I've heard is that it is so easy to be pulled this way, that way, or the other in this space. And that in order to be an effective advocate in multi-stakeholder or multilateral fora, you need to have a narrow focus. You need to really hone in on what is of genuine interest to you because that personal motivation and desire to understand the backstory to all of the issues that have taken place is really important. It is also, perhaps more of a return on investment to participate at the national level first before you start participating at the international level. The possibility that someone will speak to you in a language you don't understand is minimal. People are more respectful of time limitations. Issues can be more locally relevant. Frequency of meetings is tailored to local concerns. And you also will meet 
stakeholders who we will then see at international fora. So perhaps it is best to begin your engagement first nationally and then expand internationally. Again, participate thematically, be open to learning, be open to making mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. And as long as you learn from the mistakes and you realize you know, uh, not to do that again or to do that again, that can be very important. And finally, uh, it's a bit of a cliche and it's from um, the book, How to uh, Win Friends and Influence People, but make more friends and allies than you do enemies. Don't burn too many bridges. It is easy to do that in civil society. It is easy to do that as an advocate, but I've certainly learned myself that it can be very helpful to have allies that you are able to coalesce with, to discuss strategy with, who will support you, who will motivate you. So that's what I was just doing. Make friends, choose your battles wisely, don't chase all of the wins, and quarantine your ideas to discuss them at the right places. Thanks. Thank you very, Thank you very much, Aiden. Um, uh, and just to add a little information about, on that, it's also when you are in, in at international forums, nice to meet people from your country and like have your networking effects also at these places. So now to you, Emilia, we would like to hear more about the Youth Summit, if you can compare between the planning phase and today after a whole week of sessions at the IGF, how do you feel about it? Uh, what do you expect for the future of the youth? How do I feel about it is tired, <laughs> uh, but it is also a very, very rewarding experience. Uh, so let's just uh, start from the beginning. So um, the, IGF, the IGF was supposed to happen in Poland uh, the last year. So we already started some preparations at that time. Uh, but I must say it was quite fortunate that it actually didn't happen here last year because it gave us more time to start with the Project Youth Summit. Uh, because uh, we were really impressed by what happened in Berlin in 2019, where almost 100 people gathered together and created youth messages that were very powerful. There were the expression of how young people perceive different uh, challenges in the internet governance, what changes they would like to introduce. So that's what inspired us and also uh, allowed us to go one step further because uh, in Berlin, we met uh, in one day and created those messages, which, yeah, it was amazing that we could do that. So this year, we just wanted to have more time. So that's why we started Project Youth Summit in summer. We had an open call for applications. A lot of hundreds of people from all around the world applied. Uh, it was very hard choice. Like the applications was on such a high level that we were really sorry that we only could have like 80 participants. And then they worked uh, in the groups on points of action, uh, the postulates, but more uh, complex with uh, targeted to the uh, specific stakeholder groups. So, uh, these are the solutions proposals, but also with ideas who could help in introducing them. So we want to deliver those points of action to people, to organizations who could actually help in implementing them. So I think that uh, after this uh, part of the meeting, we will have a Jamboard, yeah, if I'm right. So we will share uh, there how you can access those points of action. So. Uh, we would love to hear your opinion because our participants have put so much hard work into them and they are just, I think, something very, very, they are like a breakthrough in many aspects. So, yeah, so that would be from my side for now. Thank you. Thank you, Emilia. Oh, it's tiring for sure, but also rewarding to see it happening in afterwards all the results that we get from it so last but not least Aileen you have been participating in both uh, dynamic coalitions and NRI's meetings could you give a quick glimpse of uh, to youth participation in your case from the Latin American and the Caribbean region thank you very much Pedro for giving me the floor and hi everyone 
I'll comment quickly on the Youth Coalition because we will have more time to talk about it. Um, basically, the Youth Coalition Intergovernance has been around the IGF for already 11 years ago, so it's um, an old, <laughs> if you want to call it, Dynamic Coalition. And we, we want to explain as at every meeting that we are not an organization, but we have under the umbrella of the Youth Coalition a lot of organizations, like for example, the US Oratory, and we also do um, much more things with other initiatives and organizations. I, I will uh, talk a little bit about the Youth Lag like IGF. Uh, this year we made the second edition online, but it was our sixth edition. Um, we had uh, luckily uh, the chance to access to funding from the Internet Society Foundation. So that allowed us to have an open course in Spanish this year. Last year was in English. And we have several webinars with experts from the region. And um, we are very happy with the results because also young people also was um, en brave enough uh, to apply for sessions. So they conducted their own sessions. They also partnered with other young people in the region to speak about different topics. Like for example, uh, gender, they also talk about, about uh, remote work and education and well, other topics. Um, I, I will try to uh, stick to the time as much as possible. Um, a few words on the Youth IGF Argentina. This year we are also conducting our meeting online and it's happening on December 18th. So well, if you want to join, I, I will got, gladly share with you the, the links so you can check. Um, this year we are having mainly two topics. One is going to be about the environment and the effects of the digitalization on the environment. And the other topic is going to be about uh, well, youth engagement, uh, not only on the national region, a national level, also on the regional one. And uh, yes, I, I think that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, to those that do not already know, Eileen, she is uh, one of the most active uh, youth on internet governance that I know. She is absolutely amazing on the amount of things that she can do. So I would like to thank you three and proceed to a quick question, but really important one about the, thought, the thoughts of you three about the MHLB and the leadership panel, if you'd like to say a few words on it. So first, Aiden. Sure, I'd be happy to comment on it. So I've had an evolution of thinking on the MHLB, which is the multi-stakeholder high-level body, sort of the IGF plus and the associated leadership panel. The IGF is broken. The current status quo of having this discussion forum and nothing else to go to action the items, this doesn't really seem fit for purpose for me. I'm not sure if it was ever fit for purpose. I can acknowledge 16 years ago, perhaps that was the, the political reality of the day was that this was all that was suitable. I don't really think it's appropriate anymore. And so what this office is really an acknowledgement of the problem I don't think it proposes the right solution, but it is something and something is better than nothing. And whether it is a good or bad thing, whether you like the proposal or not, there is no other proposal out there. No one else is suggesting anything different. So I think that we should participate in it. I think that it is better to have a leadership panel that has strong civil society advocates, a leadership panel that includes youth on it, than to pretend that this is not going to happen when we see where all of the political capital is going. So I think that we just try to support the initiative to become involved and to try to become very involved in shaping the participation. Because again, there is no other, there is no other proposal on the table. And suddenly my fear is that if we do not participate in something like this, if we reject it, there are two things that can happen. One, this forum will continue to lose its relevance and stakeholders that want to have important conversations are simply going to either go to a new forum that may not be multi-stakeholder, that may not include our participation at all, and then we will not have a voice at all. So that would be my primary danger. So to the extent that we can, I am trying to be very positive about it, and I would encourage everyone in the room to 
uh, submit nominations for who should be on the leadership panel and to ensure that we have really robust, strong civil society participation on that. Thanks. Emilia. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. So I think my comment would be just uh, very quick. Uh, personally, uh, I think that as uh, I could agree with what uh, Aiden said, that if there is no other proposition on the table, yeah, so we can just uh, believe that it will go into this direction. What we, especially as young people, should really focus on, and this is also something I did mention, and I totally support that, is uh, how to get involved and how to get meaningfully involved. Uh, like over the a uh, few uh, past years, we can observe that the youth involvement is growing. We are being treated more and more seriously. Uh, I think that involving the youth summit into the IGF structure uh, is the best uh, evidence that it's happening. So what we really need to focus on is how uh, we are also involved in the future initiatives and that our role uh, will be you know that because sometimes youth events uh, are a bit like a bubble so they are young people speaking for young people young people are listening but you know it's uh, it's staying in this bubble so what we need is to get also to the people outside of this bad bubble to get to the high level um, representatives to decision makers and to get involved as an equal participants of this process. So that's from my side. Thanks, Emilia. Thanks, Aiden, as well. Uh, so Eileen, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree with both Aiden and Emilia that it would be worse not to have anything at all. But uh, however, on personal level, I don't agree with the position, for example, of the JustNet coalition, which uh, basically they say that they, they don't support at all. Um, because in that way, if for example, you are saying you, you shouldn't apply for, for, a, for a spot, for a place there, you are also excluding yourself from the conversation. So as Aidan was saying, I think it's important to, to apply for a position there. Um, I also want to mention, I think, at least one positive thing uh, that we can get from the um, a leadership panel uh, that it could definitely help to amplify the the reach of the IGF because as you know uh, there isn't a lot of coverage from news on, on the events and uh, this is sadly because it, sh it should deserve more more highlight and also it could increase the, um, the inclusion of other uh, participants but on the other side I think it's it's worrying um, to have that um, that, for example, the decisions are going to be made through the Chapman House rules. And in that way, it would be very difficult to understand from which uh, stakeholder is coming a certain position. Um, and other aspect that I want to mention quickly is about that there is no mention to youth at, at all. Um, and as a, we were saying at the working group um, of inclusive internal governance ecosystem and digital cooperation that is part of the youth summit, that uh, there should be uh, the inclusion of youth. Uh, even we, we should consider the possibility that youth is considered as a recognized stakeholder, because in that way we can guarantee a place at the table. Um, uh, something that's also um, caught my attention is that, well, if you see the nominations, uh, how it's explained on the terms of reference of the leadership panel, it says that it's going to be comprised by, for example, the UN Tech Envoy, and we are not seeing the UN Youth Envoy. So that's something that we should also uh, consider. Thank you. Thanks, Eileen. Uh, thanks again to you three for your valuable opinions. and. 
Now we're passing to the second part of the session, which is the map to IG, IG mechanisms and youth. At this map, we invite everyone to take a look at our Miro board that shows historical events and how youth was or not represented. So please take a look and give us your comment through Zoom chat that Atif will read out to uh, or raise your hand. For on-site participants, please also use the raise hand function on Zoom or let us know uh, manifesting yourselves here. Uh, we will discuss for 20 minutes and we will give you five minutes to read out and then we can begin. I'm sharing the link at the Zoom and I'm also sharing here in the screen so we can see it. Uh, technical team, can you please give me co-host? I think it's a little bit uh, too small to you to see, so you'll be zooming on each uh, each card at a time. Okay, Pedro, I can jump in a little bit. Um, so uh, to explain a bit of context on this map, uh, we gather uh, all the inputs from all the Youth Coalition sessions. And, oh, we are not seeing it, okay. Um, so for example, it says um, about, well, uh, youth, uh, well, the recommendation of creating a coalition for youth, that was uh, one mentioned. It also well, uh, says about other problems like um, access to the internet. Uh, well, you can see on, on this map many more of the, um, of the things that we have been discussing on, on the past uh, meetings. Uh, maybe we, you can zoom, um, zoom out a little bit. Um, two minutes to go.
a bit more than one minute to go. Thirty seconds. So time is up. Um, our questions for our participants now are how to increase youth participation. Do you have any reflections on this matter related to digital cooperation mechanisms? So uh, please, let's start there with the same order. Aiden? Sure, thanks. So this is the first time that I've seen the mirror board. I'm not sure who put it together, but it's very detailed so thank you that was really fascinating i think so to, the question that you asked is really um how do we increase youth participation and i think we want to be talking about active and meaningful participation and how you measure that i don't know i feel like we need to have some sort of way to understand who is participating who are the missing stakeholders youth of course is not monolithic we have different ideological perspectives we have different people we have a lot of views to capture so we do need to reflect a bit on what are the perspectives that are missing from discussions that involve youth i think that we also need to focus on making sure that youth are trained in the right soft skills people need to be taught how to negotiate how to work with others public speaking storytelling Effectiveness ultimately starts with how you conceptualize your work and your ideas to have a loud voice and to be able to give a speech, though, when you don't have a, the problem statement and you don't have the solutions and you barely understand the issues can really undermine you. So we also need to get into a position where we're able to support our community in understanding the issues, understanding the uh, uh, conversations that have taken place in corridors that have shaped discussions in the past that we were not privy to. So stakeholder analysis, power analysis, understanding the content, we need to work on that in order to be able to ensure that our participants are effective. And you need to be able to package issues in a way so that others care. And I think sometimes when I look at how you present issues in different fora, you come from a place of victimhood, and it sounds like you don't have any agency. Oftentimes, these people actually are victims, but that is not an effective way all the time to present your arguments. You need to, in my experience, for others to work with you, you need to appear to have agency. Otherwise, you might get a very short-term solution, or you might be told some empty words, but no change will actually happen if people don't believe you will follow through and follow up on what you're demanding. So it's a difficult question. How do we meaningfully increase youth participation? Well, we obviously need money. We obviously need uh, some kind of um, organizations to step forward that are a bit more professionalized, who are able to invest deeply in capacity building. More so, I think, in soft skills rather than those hard skills around subject matter expertise. You can learn those. So yeah. I don't know, one of those difficult questions, but we definitely need uh, to think about who is missing, to think about how to measure you know, uh, uh, what our skills gaps are, and we need to find a way to channel those conversations to those who can make it rain and can potentially get us the resources we need. Thanks.
Thanks, Aidin. Exactly because it's a hard question, there, is no, there are no hard answers. So it's, that's the point of this panel. <laughs> so Emilia, please. Uh, thank you very much. And I would like to say that I really hope that uh, many participants of this session will uh, take the floor after us because I am very curious about your suggestions and your ideas, especially that I spent the last year uh, trying to get more youth involved. So yeah, I, I, I have tried, tried uh, out quite a lot of methods. So uh, I would really love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, it's a difficult question. And what uh, came to my mind, um, is also something that we have talked a lot uh, already at this uh, summit, at this uh, IGF, is that there are already a plenty of youth initiatives, youth organizations, and they are sometimes doing quite uh, similar things, uh, but uh, separately. So I think that here this year, we are having a very good start that in organizing this youth summit, we, we joined the forces of three organizations, uh, Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, Youth Observatory from the Internet Society, and Youth IGF Poland. And I think that's what helped us to do such amazing things, such a, such a, to prepare it so well to this summit. Also, we are in touch with Youth X Policymakers by German Informatics Society. And we are also talking with other youth initiatives. So what I think is very important is to have this conversation to exchange experiences because, and, and not to try, uh, treat each other like a competition, but like uh, potential partners. So I think it is something very important in increasing youth involvement is just to cooperate together. Uh, among the existing initiatives, because I think that joining the forces, it, it makes it much easier to reach out to new people. And so also the second thing uh, is uh, also to reaching out to people from uh, especially marginalized groups who sometimes they just don't know how to start, they don't know how they could speak up for their group. So I guess it is very important also to remember about these groups that are sometimes left behind by the rest of the society. So I think that's also very important to include those voices and we should remember about those groups and create a space for them when where they could actually feel that they can share and that somebody will listen to them, will listen to their perspective and who will treat them as equal partners to have a conversation with. So that was from my side. Thank you. I couldn't agree with you more, Emilia. Uh, excellent considerations. So Aileen, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Pedro. Um, okay, I will go and then I will pass the, the floor to Jenna. Um, so what I was thinking when I was building this map is that uh, throughout all the history of the Youth Coalition, we kind of have like uh, very good ideas and they are kind of repeating sometimes, but uh, we can see that some of them have been uh, uh, make concrete, not, not sure how to say in English. Um, so for example, uh, we were asking for a mentorship uh, part and well, uh, at least um, the ISOC Youth Ambassadors Program offered that possibility to have some mentorship and get involved in the IGF with enough time to learn or how to participate there. Um, also, I, I think um, Aida was mentioning about uh, resources. And that's something that we are also asking as part of the dynamic coalitions uh, to have access to some funding, because for example, we would love to have a lot of young people attending the, the ITF forum, but unfortunately that is not something that we can do right now, but uh, it's something that could be considered for the future. Um, I think that's all, thank you. 
Thank you, Tree, for your contributions. Um, now we are opening the speaking uh, query, query <laughs> for you all to speak about your youth initiative or organization. And please also leave your comments on the stick notes and the mirror boards. Uh, it's there on the chat of the Zoom. Uh, so people can reach you, reach you out. Um, firstly, I would just want to check if uh, Idir Kula is with us online to share about the youth digging messages. And then Elizabeth or Demetria from the youth policymakers. And please stick to two minutes interventions. Thanks. Then we will open for the open mix. Just let me check here. Idil, Elizabeth Demetria, are you there? Oh, oh she's there. This, got it. Um, hey, I'm Demetria. I'm from the um, German Informatic Society that presented the um, Youth Times Policymakers program and published four policy papers on um, four of the uh, topics of the IGF. Did this turn off? Okay. Um, we published those early this week, Monday, on uh, yigf.de if you want to check them out. Um, and so our initiative was essentially that we had four competency building workshops on inclusive internet government governance ecosystems, access and accessibility, um, security and vulnerable groups, and content media and literacy. And then we had about 45 young people meet with policymakers from all over the world. Um, and the outcomes were the four policy papers that I mentioned earlier at yigf.de. Um, and I actually wanted to present a question to the three of you about um, sort of something that you said about like the follow up after publishing something like this, right? It's cool, we all got together, we brought all of these young people together and had a lot of things that we discussed and a lot of these presentable outcomes, but then how does that actually translate, you know, into something besides just a list, you know? Like I, I found what you were saying interesting is essentially what I wanted to follow up on unless you have any other questions about the initiative from our side. Uh, actually, we just got uh, Idil Kula at the room. So Idil, you have the floor and then we can proceed to questions. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, I was unable to join the meeting, sorry for this. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to present and share the Youthic Message 2021 for all of you. Um, as part of the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, YouthWeek is a yearly, yearly event for youth to engage in internet governance, digital policy, and cooperation. This year, as a group of 30 passionate and dedicated young experts, we have gone through an exciting and dense working phase in which we shared perspectives to each other and refined our inputs for the Youth Message 2021, starting uh, putting our efforts from the early days of this spring, we have built our message on four thematic sections of one, digital technologies within government bodies, platforms, digital self-determination and dig digital literacy, and finally, disinformation. Jumping into the messages, um, under the section of government's use of digital technologies, we upheld the need for counterbalance between digital and, and also analog access to governmental services. Secondly, while pointing out inclusion by design with regard to the innovation and digitalization, we suggested solutions to increasing the accountability of governments in the path to digital transformation. We also remarked the importance of human involvement and policy experimentation concepts such as reg regulatory sandboxes throughout the design, application, and use of AI systems by governments. In relation to the platform section, considering the disruptive trends on data analytics, we insisted on fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory accessibility to raw data 
for especially startups and SMEs. Secondly, we went in depth with the cruciality of creation technical norms on interoperability and data portability. Thirdly, we also demand more granular, more granular uh, transparency standards on data processing, business models, and targeting systems. On digital self-determination and digital literacy part, pointing out to the proliferation of digitization and surveillance practices, we raised the importance of healthy preservation of our authentic identities, democratic institutions and values among society. Likewise, we claim an open and fair use of the internet for individual self-determination rights, not to be overshadowed by states or private sector interests. In this respect, we raised the implications of user anonymity and preservation of personally identifiable information on the notion of digital self-determination. On behalf of the promotion of digital self-determination, we highlighted the benefits of increasing digital literacy levels among society. And also we referred to practices and tools such as impact assessments and also internal and external audits. Finally, on disinformation part, we upheld the importance of critical thinking and creation of healthy vision of information among society. Moreover, we recommend creation of capacity building and training programs on digital literacy that targeted to broad portions of society. And finally, while giving due weight and importance into the protection of freedom of speech rights, we raised, we raised the necessity of collaboration between media, governments, private sector, and also civil society in order to combat the spread of disinformation. And this is the very brief wrap of the Youth Speak Message 2021. Thanks a lot for listening to me. Yeah, it's, it's to you, Pedro. I mean, thank, thank you. you. Uh, this as this here, this, those two last, last expositions is exactly why we need this diversity and uh, a lot of people approaching the same issues through uh, youth lenses. So they get these amazing results, these amazing uh, points, these amazing uh, deliverables, things that really uh, reinforce the need of youth discussion and youth participation. So uh, I'm giving the floor to Aiden. She, he want to make a few comments. Thanks for that, Pedro. And I just wanted to respond to the, the great comments that you were making. Um, I, 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 I'm sorry, I forget your name. I think it was Demetrius. Um, perfect. So Demetrius, great question. And I, I think one role that the German Informatics Society, for example, might be able to do is to help engage in a very targeted way in network building between youth and policymakers and industry actors and perhaps regulatory bodies or the principles within regulatory bodies who are actually considering some of these issues and are in a position to be behind the scenes uh, uh, working to advance um, uh, regulatory interventions, for example. So it's going to depend on the issue. And so I would be doing some stakeholder analysis and trying to understand who has the leverage here. It's never civil society, but it's, I've, <laughs> you know, the, the muscle is always with financial interests or government, of course, state power is very helpful. And civil society only ever gets some wins when we can sort of, you know, see some common ground with someone else. So I think it would be great to help build those networks, connect civil society, connect young people to the right people so that when we do have some opportunities to be able to advance a legislative proposal or something else that is of mutual interest, we can. I think that's also helps you know, reminding people to quarantine their ideas and to release them in the right forums. It's very easy to go to the wrong place and then to feel like you've been very ineffective because that would that forum was never in a position to be able to advance the issues that you discussed. And I think it can also be really helpful to provide mentorship. And by mentorship, I, I see what some organizations that try to build capacity in the youth space consider mentorship, and it's different than what I think we need. So sometimes mentorship is done internally. It's sort of an afterthought. It's just 
you know, I received some mentorship from the Internet Society. Didn't think it was very helpful. Uh, I didn't think that the, you know, the mentor I was provided had any knowledge of the issues. But I think that they were simply the only person in the organization that was told to mentor 40 people. So this is back, you know, <laughs> if, you know, over five years ago now. So I don't think that is the kind of mentorship that we really want. I think by mentorship, we want uh, high profile individuals with a Rolodex of contacts who are able to connect us to the right people in the corridors of power. I think we meant mentors who are very aware of the institutional politics of how decisions are made, who are able to sort of brief us off the record, of course, on how to you know, intervene effectively in that environment. And you have to pay these people. And that is the thing that, that the people that we want as mentors are not cheap. And so we do need, uh, but I do think that there would be a lot of value in organizations making these mentors available to us who are, who are available on call, who it's not sort of a, you know, a weekly thing or something, but just on an ad hoc basis, maybe we need five hours of time with someone who has left government and is now at you know, Covington or Jonesday or somewhere, um, and who is able to help us deeply understand how we can advance this proposal in a way that would be effective. So this is what I would love to see, more stakeholder analysis, more help in understanding which forums to take our ideas to so that we can actually see them implemented and access to uh, mentors who are high profile and high impact. Thanks. Thanks, Aiden. I agree with that as well. Like at least a mentorship that is able to do some one-to-one -one engagement is something that really makes much more of a difference. Uh, we, had, we have Jenna Fung here in the Zoom room with her hand raised. And I already know that there are some people here that we want to give uh, some comments afterwards. So uh, Jenna, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much. After hearing all the speakers sharing, now my thoughts um, over everywhere. It's actually my fourth year joining this YCIG meeting since I'm the program coordinators of the Asia Pacific Youth IGF. And I was also in person joining the youth summit uh, in Berlin in 2019. And that was that one year that I realized that the youth community and internet governance community is getting stronger because that was that one time where youth leaders from all around the world get together and make action plan together. And so I think that kind of meeting is really meaningful, but unfortunately because of the pandemic, that was something we can't really do. But in the past one year and also 2021, I've been observing the great work this community has been doing, especially in the Latin America and Euro region. Um, you guys been doing different new projects and initiative, including working groups that actually produce actual output from youth. And in Asia Pacific, when we execute similar projects, that might be a little bit difficult because to be honest, to some extent, different countries in Asia Pacific had different understanding and awareness about internet governance. And when we want to do something similar, that might be a little bit challenging, but just want to also give an update um, about the Asia Pacific internet governance scenes is that this year, even we've been doing the second year virtually for our youth RGF, we have around hundred participants joining our activity this year, even without financial incentive. So we could understand that young people from Asia Pacific are also starting to get more interested in internet governance and want to get more involved. So I think um, when we are trying to pop the bubble and try to get more involved in internet governance in general, we should also consider how we can continue engaging those who are already active in their own region and make them become even more active in the global region because young people are the ones who 
can make a difference and make changes to the world and our cyberspace in the future. And I think what we stand together to do now will be really um, affecting the coming years. So I guess while we are putting so much effort, which of course I appreciate that a lot, um, including all the proposal of having different initiative or mentorship or activity that we could have, I think we could also think of how to make our youth community, I mean, youth global community more inclusive so we can produce something more together in terms of, you know, breaking the boundary of our region. Because as simply as when we having different coordination call, maybe having a friendly time for all members of different time zone will be really helpful. That's one of the way to make things more inclusive. Because friends from the Pacific always complain, even to us in Asia Pacific by saying, we're having late calls, so they can't really join, even though they're highly interested. So I think we should also take smallest things into consideration when we make plans, especially I think in 2023, IGF will be going to Asia Pacific. And after all this year, finally, IGF is going to Asia. And so I think while we are continuing to do the great work, I think it's also important that we could do something new so we can create synergies between different initiatives of different regions so we can make our plan bigger and greater in a network stronger in just a few years. So I think I might stop here. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Jenna. Uh, so we still have a little less than five minutes here to uh, on-site speakers. So if anyone wants to say something, you have the word. Oh, please. Uh, and please present yourself as well. Hello. I'm Nagendra Lamsal, Deputy Attorney. I'm from Office of the Attorney General Nepal. Uh, it is related to the government of Nepal. As a basically South Asian country, I'm re representing from the South Asian country. As a Nepal, there is a literacy rate, uh, 91%. So uh, basically youth are engaged in the digital policy, uh, digital engagement, engagement. So that for capacity building of youth in the decision making process, I think that uh, presentation skills and sequence of sharing is important. As a, one of the barriers I see uh, due to the language barrier in different part of the country, as in my country also, if there is language barrier uh, to speak in English, so that we can make idea of a, a volunteer to interpret, uh, to interpret the local languages into English languages and other languages, so that new innovative ideas can be created, new ideas can be shared as audio stories and video stories, so that the global uh, peoples can be achieved and global peoples can uh, know the ideas of other countries, uh, share the ideas of other countries, which can be useful for internet governance and making youth in the decision making process. So we should have to make a collaboration with the youth organizations because in every of the states, I think that there are youth organizations working targeting to the youth only. So that if we make a collaboration with the youth organizations of different countries who are recognized as a working in a digital governance, digital literacy and other issues related to the youth so that we can build up capacity through the, this youth organization uh, in their own states and in a globally, uh, globally also, so that we can share experience as a digital medium and we can uh, make a innovative ideas because people can share their own innovative ideas in local language better than other languages. So I want to uh, uh, tell that uh, this youth forum should make a collaboration with the different districts or uh, organizations uh, targeting to the youth so, uh, so that we can collect the information and audio stories and video stories in local languages and make interpretation and translate in other international languages and other local languages so that the globally the countries of different youths and other stakeholders and other people can benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for one last uh, and a bit short comment. So if anyone wants to speak and 
I would like to think it's always interesting to have input from policymakers. So the mic is open. Okay, so I would like to highlight a, a program that exists in Brazil since 2015 and could be used as a success uh, example of youth participation. This program is uh, was created by the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, and the main goal was to improve the youth participation and internet governance. Since then, the program already sent more than 200 youth participants to both national, global, and regional IGFs, and also uh, teach about internet governance for more than a thousand, a thousand uh, youth members. So this has uh, helped a lot to strengthen the IG ecosystem in our country and if anyone wants to know more about and what are the lessons we learned there, please reach us. Thank you. Thank you. So we are on our time here to, I will ask participants if they want to be part of a group photo. There will also be a, a group print scan uh, online on the Zoom room. So if you can, and if you want to, please open your camera on the Zoom room. And those of you who want to take uh, fast photo here. Emilia, can you assist me with that? Uh, then we will proceed uh, for the remarks on YCIG and the closing moment of our session. So one minute to this photo. So thanks. I believe that we have already taken a register at the Zoom room as well. And now uh, I would like to thank everyone for sharing with us about the participation in the internet governance ecosystem. Uh, it's really inspiring to all of us that are trying to be more active in these spaces. And now I'm giving the floor to Eileen, who will give us a short introduction to the work done by uh, YCIG during 2021. Eileen, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much, Pedro. Uh, I will comment very quickly that uh, Shena shared on the Zoom chat uh, a link so our Nepal uh, friend can connect with the folks of Net Mission Asia. And now I'm going to explain very quickly. Oh, I cannot share screen. <laughs> Okay, I, I will just speak. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, the Youth Coalition Inter Governance has 11 years old. Uh, we are very proud to see uh, more young people getting involved in the IG ecosystem. And we believe that youth supporting youth is the best way to achieve this. Um, just to give some highlights of this year. Eileen, oh. sorry, uh, you just have co-host if you want to share it. Share. Oh. So they are giving you a co-host. There you go. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Uh, so ju just uh, give a quick overview of the things that we have been doing this year. Uh, when we launched a YCIG questionnaire to understand about the, um, the needs of our community. Um, from that questionnaire, uh, we received a lot of responses to have uh, webinars. So we uh, facilitated the webinars 
one on environmental sustainability and the other one on inclusive IG ecosystem and digital cooperation. Uh, for those webinars, we also have the collaboration of other dynamic coalitions. So we are very happy to, to have the space to discuss with people from around the world. Um, we also um, co-organize with the U.S. Observatory uh, working groups to submit workshop proposals. So um, if you are seeing a lot of uh, youth ses sessions this year, uh, well, uh, we, we made that happen all together. So we are very happy to see, I think, more than eight um, workshop proposals conducted by, by youth. Um, several of them also have this interconnection with um, youth and not youth people, which I think is, is very interesting experience to have. Uh, we also um, participated and um, partnered with UNDESA and the major group for children and youth to create a policy brief on digital public goods. Um, we are expecting that to get, um, get on internet in a couple of weeks from now. Uh, we also conducted a mentorship for the Internet Society IGF Youth and Muscles program. And this is our second year conducting this mentorship. Uh, for us, it has been a very rewarding experience uh, because as we always say, uh, the mentorship is not just a learning um, that the youth person learn from the old person, let's say, but also on the other way around, because I think it's uh, very enriching to have these perspectives on the different topics. Um, well, we also have some youth ambassadors here, and I want to thank you for joining us on the session today. Um, well, I also want to mention that we participated at Eurodig Day Zero uh, with a session, and also we were part of Youth Dig, um, where uh, we had very interesting conversation with the young participants. Um, as Emilia was sharing um, a couple of minutes ago, we also partnered with the Youth IG of Poland for the organization of the Youth Summit uh, that just happened on December 6th. But before that, we have a lot of preparation. We have uh, well, these working groups where we prepare about dif uh, different documents, um, policy background papers, and the, well, the 10 points of action for each working group. We also conducted some roundtable webinars to know about the feedback uh, from the youth community and so on. Um, we also participated at uh, the Youth Like IGF Open Course last year and this year, um, as I was saying. Um, and well, it was um, a great opportunity to also highlight the work of the dynamic coalitions that, as we always say, <laughs> Every meeting is very important to have more light on the intersectional work, not only the dynamic coalitions, but also the best practice forums. And well, um, by this year, also the policy networks. Um, well, um, yesterday uh, we presented at the DC main session in collaboration with other DCs. Um, that's something very uh, important also to to share about uh, the youth voice in, in these many sessions. Um, let's see. <laughs> I, I think that's almost all because I, I don't want to forget uh, this announcement that every year we have elections. Um, this is very interesting uh, for all the youth community because uh, while well, they nominate themselves, they also nominate other people to represent the five regional groups. Um, so we invite everyone to check on our um, social media and website and everything. I will drop the link on the chat so you can check. Um, we hopefully um, we would like to continue our discussion. Um, for me, this is my last year at the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance Steering Committee. So we are very looking forward to new phases. And I think that's it. And of course, if you want to make questions, um, the floor is yours. I'll give around uh, 10 seconds to see if anyone has any question. And if they don't, uh, we will proceed to concluding remarks by our speaker by our speakers. So, if anyone has a question online or on site, please 
just uh, manifest yourself. I think we can then proceed to uh, concluding remarks. Um, keep in our order of speakers, please, Aiden. Thanks, Pedro. Hi again, everyone. I'm Aiden Bodelin. I think I would just end by saying it would be great to see more of you participating in the agenda setting and decision making processes related to the issues that you care about. So knock on doors, try to get involved and I hope you will have a lot of success. At the moment, there is a big pressure, especially within the UN system to make UN processes much more outcome oriented. So there is a lot of opportunities at the moment. So clearly the UN is acknowledging that digital issues are getting out of their hands, either because of self-regulation, because national governments are regulating uh, regional trade agreements that escape UN control. The UN is really cognizant of this. It's under pressure to regain authority, whether they do this in a multi-stakeholder way that includes youth and civil society remains to be seen. Many governments, of course, are opposed to multi-stakeholder participation. They don't understand it, but they might be open to it on some issues that they don't understand themselves. Gender issues, for example, there is a lot more willingness from governments to accept participation from civil society and youth on issues of gender. So if there is an issue you're really passionate about, this is a really great opportunity and, and moment in time to get involved. Knock on doors, just try, and who knows what will happen. But I wish you good luck, and I hope to see more of you advocating for our collective interests. Thanks. Thanks so much, Aiden. Uh, now, Emilia, Emilia asked me to share a uh, uh, QR code there on the screen, so I'm asking the technical team to give me permission to do that. And Emilia, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully in a few uh, seconds, uh, you will have to possibility, yeah, because uh, you will share the screen. Okay, <laughs> you will see the uh, QR code on the screen. Uh, this will, uh, if you scan it, you will get an access to uh, the results of our work, the points of maybe, not my work, the work of our participants, uh, the points of action. And uh, if you would have any comments, because we just uh, firstly published it yesterday, so it is a very new thing. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like a premiere. So we are very uh, interested in getting your comments, your, your thoughts, and definitely answering the Metres question. Uh, Definitely, we want to continue. We don't want uh, this uh, work, uh, those contacts, those networks uh, that has been created to stop at this IGF happening in Poland. We would really love to continue the work and continue it to the IGF in Ethiopia or then IGF in Tokyo or even further. So we would really like to invite you uh, to join us and to share your thoughts, share your comments, um, because we just want those uh, points of action, those that will be also soon published uh, in the form of the report, because here uh, it is all, 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 sorry, this is only a sneak peek of this work. So just you feel welcome to, to join us and to cooperate with us further. It would be wonderful if you would like to. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Pedro, for sharing. Thank you. So now for our last minute, Aileen, you have the floor. <laughs> thank you very much, Pedro. Uh, I, I think it was um, very interesting also to see you um there and I, I really want to to thank everyone for for joining our session and i hope that it could allow you to reflect a little bit about the youth participation and what we can do from now and i want to thank also my my colleagues from the steering committee noah and anatif um not sure if uh, you guys want to say something else and um, i want to thank uh pedro emilia aiden 
um, Stella also for helping us. Um, and I think that's all. And I hope to see you next year. So thanks everyone. And hopefully see you around on other internet governance events and initiatives. See ya.